Welcome to the fifth episode of Upgrade My PC, please. If you missed any of the previous episodes or the video explaining what this series is all about, then be sure to check those out. I'll link them in the video description. On last week's episode, we checked out five AMD FX 6300 PCs, and they were all in need of various upgrades. You, the viewers, voted Gabriel's Death Star the most worthy of receiving the proposed upgrades. Therefore, we have our first US-based winner, and coming Gabriel's way is a brand new Ryzen 5 1400 CPU, a Gigabyte B350 motherboard, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and a GeForce GTX 1050 Ti graphics card. And once again, the good news for the runners-up is that they will be receiving a Rainbow Six Siege game code from Ubisoft. Big thanks to Ubisoft for supporting the series and providing our contestants with free games. Once all the new hardware is installed, we'll get Gabriel to send us over some updated photos of his refurbished rig, and then we'll show them off to you guys at the start of Season 2 in a special feature. Also, do not forget to vote each week as that will place you in the running to win some very cool prizes and they are global giveaways. Last week, JK Willie won a Ryzen 5 1500X processor. This week, we have another cool prize and I'll announce that later in the video. Anyway, we have five new PCs to check out, so let's get into it. Nimmer built Darwin back in 2012 and since then the build has continued to evolve, hence the name. The APU was picked for the reason anyone picks an APU, it was cheap and it packed a decent GPU. Before too long though, the integrated graphics was replaced with a free Radeon HD 7700 and that was picked up from a friend but has recently been swapped out for an RX 480. So in terms of GPU performance, the system is actually quite good. The issue here of course is that Trinity based A10 5800K APU, even overclocked, it's just not getting the job done, it's causing massive system bottlenecks. Other upgrades over the years have included the NZXT H440 case, the Corsair TX750 power supply, and the Samsung 851 20GB SSD. The games of choice right now include Overwatch, Payday 2, and Guild Wars 2. I'm most familiar with Overwatch, and I know for a fact that the APU will be heavily limiting performance of the RX 480 in that title. At this point, Nimmer has come to the absolute end of the road with the FM2 Plus platform and is currently saving for a CPU motherboard and memory upgrade. He's a big fan of AMD and has been dreaming of a Ryzen 5 upgrade for many months now. So I propose the following, let's ditch the APU for a shiny new Ryzen 5 1600 which will throw on the ASRock AB350 Gaming K4 with 8GB of memory. The memory capacity can be later increased as there will still be two free DIMM slots available. Then with the leftover money, let's go for a 4TB hard drive to boost the system's storage capabilities. Now there's no need to juggle installed games, man I hate having to do that. Next up we have a rather bland looking system from Vince. This looks very much like something you would find in an office type setting and frankly that's probably where it belongs. Sadly Vince is trying a game on this thing and he says he's having very little fun doing so. Right now he's playing CSGO using low quality settings at low frame rates and it's much the same with other games he likes to play such as Rust and Far Cry 3. Like the A105800K that we looked at previously, the A107700K only has a 384 stream processor enabled Radeon GPU so it's extremely weak by today's standards. As usual, we do only have a $500 US budget, so we're going to have to stretch it pretty big for this one. When on a budget, go Ryzen 3, I always say, and that's been a saying for like two months now. Anyway, the R31200 on the ASRock AB350M with 8GB of DDR4 will work a treat. Then upping Vince's game will be the GeForce GTX 1060 3GB, and that will be perfect for his low-res monitor. Then making sure the upgrade doesn't go up in smoke, I recommend the EVGA 500B1, it's a 500 watt bronze certified power supply, and that will see us hit the $500 US budget right on the nose. Okay, so Liam has an insanely detailed and somewhat painful upgrade history, so get ready, here we go. In 2012, the system started with an FX4100, and that was later upgraded to the FX8320, but that CPU died just two months ago. Replacing the dead FX CPU was the Athlon X3450. Ouch. Turns out the FX8320 or the previous power supply melted the four-pin power input on the motherboard, so both the motherboard and PSU were junked. 
So having scrapped the FX build, Liam went and picked up a second-hand A8 6600K on an MSI motherboard from eBay. He also got a cheap PSU, but that died pretty soon after the purchase. So he replaced that with an EVGA 500 watt. Liam says he's finally learned his lesson on cheap PSUs. So good stuff. Shockingly, after submitting his PC though, the A8-6600K died, and he's now replaced that with an A8-7600. Uh, the latest update is the system's working, at least for now. I have no idea how one man kills so much AMD hardware, but Liam has had a seriously bad run. I'm not even sure I want to recommend anything AMD at the moment, but with the Intel 8th Gen stuff not arriving till later this week, uh, what am I to do? So again, let's opt for the Ryzen 5 1600, but this time I'm just, I'm not messing around with the motherboard. Let's just go straight in for the kill with the Gigabyte AX370 Gaming K3 and stick eight gigabytes of memory on that. At least if Liam does win the upgrade package, he's got himself a motherboard with a nice long three year warranty. Without question, Andrew should be on the next season of Scrapyard Wars because by the sounds of it, he's been training all his life. Prior to 2012, he'd never owned a PC that wasn't a salvage job. But in 2013, he bought a HP Pavilion P6 for $500, gutted it, and over the years, he's bought a number of secondhand parts to turn into what you see here. So, basically a new computer. Gaming-wise, Andrew mostly plays Doom, Skyrim, and Alien Isolation, none of which are terribly demanding, though that's probably because that's really all he can get away with for now. Apart from the APU, the rest of the system's actually rather respectable. The GeForce GTX 1050 Ti is fine for 1080p gaming, the WD Blue SSD is nice and snappy, and the Corsair Carbide's a really nice case, and I love the front air vent mod Andrew's done. The Deepcool Gamax 400 is a good value air cooler, and the EVGA 600BQ is a quality budget power supply. So once again, what we need here is a platform upgrade. Therefore, I propose the Core i5 7600K on a Z270 motherboard. What do you guys think about that? You know someone's already raced to the comment section in protest. No, seriously, this is yet another Ryzen job. Yes, everybody gets Ryzen. That said, I just realized this is our first ever Canadian contestant, so what can we do with the Canadian dollar? We have about 620 of them to play with. Using every last dollar, I proposed the Ryzen 5 1600, a gigabyte AB350M Gaming 3 motherboard, and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory. That's really gonna bring Andrew up to speed, and if he upgrades the GPU at a later point, then he really can go from mid-range type gaming right up to the high end with a single component upgrade. Last on the upgrade menu, we have Civil Ironhide Revised. Throw a few numbers in there and you could have yourself a new Logitech keyboard. Instead, this is the name of Harris's much loved gaming rig, which he bought back in 2014. The PC's initial intention was to game, but Harris now uses it quite a bit for his uni projects. Since buying the pre-built system, he's added an Intel SSD, and this year his mates got him the Corsair Carbide Spec 04 for his birthday, and that was to replace the cheap Thermaltake case that the system came in. Right now, Harris mostly plays GTA 5, CSGO, and Dota 2, and they all play okay. The problem is his CAD work. The AMD APU is woefully underpowered, and he says the system constantly freezes when adding new layers or rotating a design. So that being the case, I propose we go with the yep, Ryzen 5 1600, throw that on a standard ATX ASRock AB350 Pro 4 motherboard, and that'll fill out the Corsair Carbide case a bit better than what he currently has. Uh, we could also squeeze an eight gigabyte kit into the budget, but the ASRock board does have an additional two DIMM slots free for expansion in the future. Now with the money left over, let's get rid of that cheap and nasty Senecom Master 800 watt power supply before the thing just detonates. Harris says the power button's broken anyway. Uh, the Be Quiet System Power 8 600 watt is an affordable and high quality option, so let's drop that in there. Now in the future, if Harris upgrades the graphics card, he'll have a PC that won't just breeze through his CAD work, but it'll also be a very capable gamer. All right, guys, there's five stuttery AMD APU systems all in need of various upgrades. It's now your job to let us know which one you think is most deserving of receiving the proposed upgrade package. To cast your vote, please follow the link in the video description below. That'll head you over to the TechSpot forums. 
by signing up for the forums, commenting and voting, you'll also go in the running to win some cool prizes and they are global giveaways for the viewers. Speaking of which, the winner from last week's episode is Thiago Perez. Congratulations, mate. You have an awesome Ryzen 5 1600 processor from AMD coming your way. Big thank you to AMD for providing that amazing prize. And remember, guys, vote each week, comment, because we have more amazing prizes to give away. Finally, voting will be open till Friday night in the US, and that is Saturday afternoon here in Australia. And then we'll announce the winner of this episode at the start of next week's episode. And at that point, we'll have five new PCs to check out and we'll do it all over again. I think we'll probably check out some Core 2 quad systems next week, so that should be pretty cool. I'm your host, Steve. Go get voting.